Film cameras, including motion picture cameras, can be extremely fun and rewarding tools that help us slow down and make us more mindful about our work. But their analog nature also means that we won't instantly know if they produce usable images and requires a different level of inspection and testing compared to, say, digital cameras. Luckily, when it comes to Super 8 though, there are some key functions that can help tip you off on whether your thrift store find or rare eBay purchase are going to work or not, all before you even load them with film. I'm David, and this is The Whole Picture. Over the years, I've picked up a variety of Super 8 cameras, most recently this unique Elmo Album 3600, which features one of the widest angle lenses on a Super 8 camera. I'll have more on this in a future video, but since I just got it and it still needs testing, I thought I would take the opportunity to show you my inspection process so those looking to pick up a Super 8 camera, possibly for the first time, will know what to look out for. With the majority of Super 8 cameras being automated and motorized, they need batteries to function typically two or four double A's. And if you plan on going hunting for cameras in person, it's best to have a few batteries on hand just in case the store won't provide them for you. The battery compartments are usually very straightforward and labeled, but it can also be inside the film door or sometimes in less obvious places. Now with batteries in, we can start to test the camera with the easiest and most universal method being an auditory check. Some cameras may also have a battery check function, but in general, the auditory feedback of a running motor is going to be a good sign. If at first the camera doesn't seem to run, don't worry about it, trying fresh batteries might be worth a shot. But we also have to remember that many of these cameras are over 50 years old and not as reliable as they once were. If fresh batteries still don't work, you might want to clean the contacts and try again. If the motors are working, it's time to move on to the next step. This is where we can visually evaluate if the camera can capture images or not. With the film door open, point the camera at a bright light source and hold down the shutter. You should see flickering light as the shutter opens and closes rapidly. At this point, you should also confirm that the shutter closes completely when you release the trigger and that it's not letting in any stray light. If this is the case, your camera should be capable of safely exposing images onto film, but there are still a few things left to check. With the film door open, check to see if the take up reel and sprocket notches are functioning correctly. These aid in advancing the film to ensure that you capture moving pictures, and if they don't function properly, the film might slip or you might end up exposing the same frame multiple times. In a functioning Super 8 camera, when you press the shutter, you should be able to see the take up reel spin and observe the sprocket notch move rapidly at the same time. If that all checks out, then your Super 8 camera should be capable of capturing motion pictures. There are a few more things that you might want to check before committing to that camera though. Of course, it's a good idea to check that your focus and zoom are working correctly, but I would also recommend checking the camera's frame rate. Many Super 8 cameras only feature one frame rate, 18 frames a second, but if your camera has a switch for multiple frame rates, it would be worth checking to see if changing the setting has any noticeable effect on the camera. There should be an auditory difference with higher FPS sounding faster, as well as a visual difference in the film gate with higher FPS values resulting in faster flickering. Also, with the majority of Super 8 cameras being automated and shutter speeds being tied to frame rate, aperture and ISO will play a crucial role in these cameras' auto exposure systems. But these can be a bit difficult to test and functionality can vary from camera to camera. To test the aperture, I recommend using a flashlight like the one on your phone and moving it around directly in front of the lens of your Super 8 camera to see if there's any kind of reaction. The shape of the aperture is different on each camera, but if you observe something like this happening, the aperture should be functioning correctly. If your camera has a backlight correction feature, this would also be a good time to test that. Activating this should open up the aperture a few stops for filming with harsh backlight. Something else worth testing is the film counter. This is not necessary to the functionality of the camera, but will definitely make your life a lot easier, especially if you end up filming some major project. What the film counter does is display how much feed of film you've used so far, or how much film is left. To test this feature, all you need to do is hold down the shutter for some time and confirm that the needle on the film counter is moving. The ISO on Super 8 is tied to the notches on the cartridges themselves and interacts with these pins inside the camera. I'll put a link in the description to some resources about Super 8 ISO, but this is honestly a challenging aspect to test as the pins can be difficult to access and in general, this shouldn't be much of an issue with most cameras. But if you are set on testing the ISO, I recommend doing so with a consistent and bright light source and then seeing what kind of effect pressing these pins in different ways affects the aperture. 
Many Super 8 cameras will also feature a built-in number 85 orange filter, which is used to correctly capture daylight footage on tungsten film. Often, this filter is automatically engaged thanks to notches on the film cartridge, similar to how ISO works on Super 8, but in some cases, it may need to be manually selected. If possible, it's best to test filter functionality by either flipping the switch or pressing this pin and seeing if an orange filter comes up or not. The filter and other aspects I just listed can be honestly pretty difficult to test for, so their apparent lack of functionality shouldn't necessarily deter you. After all, these cameras were made for the average person who wouldn't really concern themselves with these small details like exposure and filters. So sometimes this kind of functionality can be hidden away cleverly, but when you actually get filming, they work properly. So that's how I typically evaluate a new Super 8 camera, and if everything seems to check out, it's time to run a roll of film through them. While the test I've outlined should be a good indicator of a camera's usability, there is always the potential for unseen issues, and every camera has its own quirks that you should try to figure out before using these fantastic cameras for any kind of serious work. Anyways, I hope you found the video interesting or informative. I'd be curious to hear if you test Super 8 cameras in a different way, and also I'm happy to answer any questions you might have on this topic or anything else related to film and film cameras. I'm David, and this is The Whole Picture.